Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Another tier list video. Today we're going to be reviewing some low cost we areas. Do not care. Before we do get into this tier list, I just want to say make sure you join my Discord server if you want to get into more of these videos. As I now have a channel where you can recommend the, the tier list videos you want to see. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope you all enjoy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, to start things off, let's have a look at our tier list. We have Cabin Crew. What? At the top of our tier list, we have oh, Top Tier. This is, of course, going to be for the airlines and have oh. a really, really good standard for the their expectations. Now, I'm talking about the low cost variants of like Emirates. We'd love to fly, will be for the airlines that I would love to fly, but they're not quite top tier. You know, the ones that are like really, really good, but they're just. They're just kind of just, they're kind of missing some really, really important features. We have would not mind flying. Now, this is going to be for airlines that are like, you know, you know, me! So, rather avoid means I kind of, you know, you know, it's kind of in the name. I'd, I'd rather avoid the airlines like this. I finally have 737 Max. Now, this is, of course, going to be for the airlines that, you know, they're not very, very safe. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be our tier list for today. So, without further ado, let's get started. Now, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, we have Air Baltic. Air Baltic is an airline based in the land of Santa and his elves. Cheer, the irrelevant cheer. but majestic and fucking freezing country of Latvia. They're the flag carrier based in Riga, but despite being 97% government owned, the amount of times they've almost gone bankrupt is preposterous. Fun fact, they actually own the second largest amount of Airbus A220s behind Delta at 45. I mean, overall, they're a pretty chill airline, and I'm sure the cabin crew fight the cold with heat, if you know what I mean. You know, <laughs> I'd love to fly them. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we have Jet 2. Thank you for flying Jet 2 Holidays. We wish you a very pleasant onwards journey. You please mind the gap between the steps and the aircraft. Man, shut the fuck up! This ain't a national railway station, bro. It's an airport. No, but for real, Jet 2 is a pretty decent airline. There's nothing crazy about them. They're kind of just there. I mean, Jet 2 are very well reviewed for their flight routes to holiday destinations, adapting throughout the yearly period, quickly switching from winter schedules to summer schedules and flying to hotspots all around Europe. I actually don't know how they managed to get routing permissions so casually like this, but they do. I mean, overall, I would not mind flying them. They're all right. So we've got EasyJet. So we bastards i'll tell you now that easy jet's kind of mid jack i i can't really do a very good scottish accent no i actually don't understand their primary purpose besides getting you from point a to b you know maybe maybe just maybe that is their purpose i don't know much about them they're kind of bland i flew them twice to and from gibraltar and the experience was not bad at all i quite enjoyed it so to be honest i don't mind flying them fly dubai oh god man you have emirates you have etihad why didn't you fly Dubai? Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you now. They are literally the sheep of Emirates, specializing in receiving bad reviews and edging Emirates in network planning and schedule. They literally just fly to places that Emirates can't fit their 777s. You know, I personally call that unfortunate. Based on the reviews that I've seen, I would much rather to avoid flying them. Next up, we've got Jetstar. Ah, good old Jetstar. Ladies and gentlemen, Jetstar is an airline based in the land of dangerous snakes, spiders, bugs, Vegemite enjoyers, friendly and welcoming kangaroo boxing opponents, extreme heat, extreme cold, slang, overdosing, coffee making, crocodile dungeon, the surf's up, brah! Upside down, reverse time zone, and weather pattern with a slight hint of opposing seasons, aka France. The sake of myself against your geographically savvy business entrepreneurs aspiring to explore the lands, finding hidden artifacts and dinosaur fossils, telling me Gibraltar is not a peninsula, man, shut up, it is. I'd like to confirm that I'm aware that my description is actually supposed to be pointing my finger, laughing at Australia. Yes, there's an airline headquartered in Melbourne, the subsidiary of the fantastic yet controversial airline Qantas. They have a product rating of 3 out of 5, and frequent travelers have given it an average rating of 6.4 out of 10. That's not too bad. They were amongst the top 20 low-cost airlines in safety for 2023 alongside Scoot and AirAsia. I don't really have anything more to say about them, but, you know, I would actually love to fly them. Vueling, 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 Vueling. Well, not gonna lie, bro, this airline is hella irrelevant. The only times I've ever actually seen their planes when they've had to divert. They're literally rated 2.5 stars, bro. That's unacceptable. I would much rather avoid. Next up, we've got Spirit Airlines. Oh boy. Ladies and gentlemen, this airline is literally the Ryanair of the American states that unite. It will ensure that you get from point A to B. Literally. Whether your plane is missing an engine or if there's a literal hurricane taking place. See, now Spirit is a special airline. They're not a low cost airline. They're an ultra low cost airline. Based in Florida, they're well known for extensive delays, massive fees, and of course, really, really poor leg room. This airline has apparently crashed 12 times with no fatalities. That's kind of crazy, bro. But hey, hey, if you want to sacrifice yourself for your wallet, feel free to fly them, bro. I do not want to be flying them anytime soon. But hey, 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 subscribe because I might be doing a review on them. Uh, next up, ladies and gentlemen, we've got good old Scoot. Scoot is the low cost airline based in Singapore. That is... That's, that's all I know about them. I, I wouldn't mind flying them to be honest. Next up, we've got AirAsia, another airline that I've literally no information about. All I know is that they're based in Malaysia and have an average rating of 6.6 .6 out of 10. I would not mind flying them. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryanair. Now we're getting to the good shit. Ryanair is the most successful low-cost airline based in the land of the Leprechauns Island. I actually reviewed them and rated their services very well. Their quality is amazing for the price that you pay, and to be honest, they keep things nice and simple. They're also amongst the safest airlines with literally zero fatal incidents. Let that sink in. Hi, I'm Saul Goodman. Did you know that you have rights? 
The Constitution says you do. Right, now let me do one last trick on it before I finish blazing the airline. Ryanair, will you marry me? Deserving of nothing but top tier. Finally, we have Wizard. I've only flown Wizard twice, and to be honest, I have very, very mixed opinions about them. I can't actually give you a valid answer. And I'm not just saying that because I can't think of something. I genuinely cannot give a valid answer to this. Because if I was to give the opinion of my first flight experience, I would say I'd much rather avoid. But if I give the opinion of my second flight experience, I'd say that I would love to fly them again. For that reason, ladies and gentlemen, it's only right but to say that I would not mind flying them. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our tier list for today of our low-cost carriers. Please do comment below your opinions on this tier list and what you think should be different. Once again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys very, very soon for the next video. Bye-bye for now.